Hello, it's Andy here, and welcome back to my walkthrough of the 2019 SANS holiday hack. Last episode, we discovered a successful password spraying attack on the ELF University network, and now in objective number four, we're asked to examine some syslog logs to identify the tool used by the attacker to steal the password hashes from the domain controller. But let's go see Sugarflum first, who needs a quick help in hand with a terminal challenge. She wants to list all the files in her home directory, which sounds like a simple enough task, but the ls command we'd normally use is not working, and just given a weird message instead. To run any application, including ls, the system needs to know where on the file system to find that executable file. There are several different possible locations, and we can use the which command to see which of these possibilities is being used. In our case, we're told that ls is running from user local bin, which is not the normal location for ls. We can use find to identify if there's multiple files called ls, and sure enough, we see the one in user local bin, and another in bin, the usual location. So with two options to pick from, why did the system pick the first one? That all comes down to an environment variable called path, which we can examine using the echo command. This variable contains several folder locations, separated by a colon, which define the search order when running commands. User local bin, user bin, bin, user local games, and finally user games. So in our case, when the system sees a file called ls in the user local bin folder, it runs this version and never gets to the genuine one in bin. What exactly is this spurious file? We can find out a little more by using the file command. This tries to identify what type of file it is. Apparently, it's a bash script. We can examine the contents with the cat command, where we discover it just prints a message to the screen and then exits. Okay, so let's run the real ls. We can override the system's path search order by explicitly specifying that we want to run the one in slash bin. We're given a success message and have completed this terminal challenge, but this isn't actually the real ls either. It too is a script, part of the holiday hack scoring system, which in turn runs a binary executable to tell the game that we completed the objective. Another way to actually get a real file listing is to use Bash's auto-completion feature, in other words, pressing tab. We're able to see the real contents of the home folder. One file is the beautiful ASCII art we saw earlier when we first opened the terminal. Another is a bunch of rejected Elf University logos. There's also a folder which is just a space character. Very interesting, but it doesn't look like it actually contains anything. Anyway, with the terminal complete, let's get back to the main objective. We have some sysmon logs in JSON format, and we're tasked with identifying the tool the attacker used to retrieve domain password hashes from the LSAS process. Sysmon is a Windows service which collects detailed information about processes, network connections, changes to files, and so on. Sugarplum recommends using EQL or Event Query Language to achieve our objective, so let's go ahead and install that with pip. We can explore the data with a query like this, which displays the number of events of each event type. Here we have events related to network, registry, file, and process activity. An easy way of identifying field names is just to look at the original data. Here I use head to print the first 20 lines of our log file. Note there's a subtype field. Let's see what subtypes exist for process events, since our goal is to identify which process access the memory space of LSAS. These are all process create events, so nothing obvious about process memory access. Let's see what process names we have information about. There's only five, and that's small enough to manually dig into. PowerShell is probably a good start, as it's commonly abused by attackers. I'm also piping the output via JQ to provide some formatting and colouring to make it a bit easier to read. All six PowerShell processes have a bunch of data passed in via the command line. Based on the function calls, this is PowerShell code which has been obfuscated by gzipping then base64 encoding it. Very suspicious. An easy way to decode this is with CyberChef, 
we just need to copy the encoded data into the input field and drag the base64 decode and gunzip steps into the recipe. This code doesn't appear to be pulling hashes, so our search must continue. Let's try examining the command.exe processes. It looks like some of those PowerShell processes were spawned from command.exe. Also, there's an entry which is a child of Elsass. If this spawned further processes, perhaps one of those was the one which stole the hashes. This command.exe has a process ID or PID of 3440, so we need our query to look for processes where the parent process ID or PPID is 3440. We get a single hit, ntdsutil.exe. This is a command line tool for managing Active Directory and could certainly be used to extract hashes. And sure enough, this is the correct answer. Before moving on, it's worth digging a bit deeper into these events, particularly all those net.exe processes. Net.exe is used to undertake a variety of client-side Windows networking tasks. Examining the details of these events shows that they're all attempts to establish a new local session using a variety of different usernames, but with the same password, Natalie1. This is probably the source of the password spraying attack we saw earlier. Further digging shows more suspicious activity in the network traffic. There's several outgoing connections made by PowerShell.exe to 192.168.86.128 on port 4444. This is the default port used by Metasploit for reverse shells. That's probably as much as we're going to get from these logs, so I'll see you in the next episode for objective number 5.